Four before diesel. It's time for a discussion about which is the best engine. Prado, Hilux, 1KZ, 1GD, 1KD, 1GR or something else. And what vehicle for you? We'll spend about 10 minutes, about a minute on each engine after this approximate one minute intro to let you know what I'm going to be talking about. There's been a lot of discussion, a lot of questions asked um, all over Facebook in comments on our YouTube channel, 4 Before Diesel. So just want to have a bit of a chit chat, including with customers that come and pick up parts and parts pickups, welcome, obviously, just send a text message to organise a time, um, bring the folding because we don't have EFT machines and stuff like that here, just old reliable stuff, paper invoices and all that works really well. Um, expect less and get more. So I just want to say, while people are picking up their parts, bit of chit chat, bit of discussion, 10 minutes, whatever the case may be, and I'm amazed that the lack of information and what they don't know. So please people, get onto those videos and when the video right now isn't long enough for you, get into our playlists, our 4 Before Diesel YouTube channel, click on that page, playlists, and there's a whole heap of organized videos for you. Check them out, watch a video, and instead of watch whatever else pops up next, go to 4 Before Diesel, watch our videos, and get the right accurate information. Right, to get started, let's give the 1KZ a minute. Okay, so back around 2011-ish, that's where we had our 1KZ. It was a 120 Proto Silver 1KZ 5-speed manual. Okay, before that we had a Hilux. So I think that was technically the first Prado I ever owned. Okay, so late 2011. Um, when I purchased it, I think it had about 230,000 kilometers on the clock. Not sure what it had when I sold it, really forgotten about that. But yeah, it did quite a bit of driving. Now, um, it's, it's a really good four-wheel drive. They're a really good engine. All the Toyota engines are good in these Pradas and Hiluxes but every single engine's got its pitfalls, things you need to avoid and things you need to be aware of. And believe me, every single engine and the rest of the vehicle can be affected by what type of fuel it's on. So where you might, people like to say, oh, but the diesel needs injectors, but then the V6 needs all these other things we've talked about. We'll get to that. We're talking about the 1KZ, but the 1KZ, it doesn't crack pistons. You do not need to replace the injectors to prevent pistons cracking. You just need to replace the injectors to keep it clean. I highly recommend new ones. We try and keep them in stock, but they're hard to get a hold of because most people don't use new, they use uh, rebuilt sort of thing and you just don't know what you're getting but it's don't be confused there's a lot of people confused they want injectors and they've got a 1kz you should be chasing glow plugs glow plugs could kill your engine you've got to change them every hundred thousand k's now back to what we're meant to be talking about from memory and i don't even remember much the 1kz it's only got about 100 kilowatts of power the 1kz t turbo with the turbo right about 100 kilowatts the torque's about 350 thereabouts okay so as a diesel manual it's a really good four-wheel drive it's got good um, it will idle up a hill in first low range without any acceleration and come down nice and slow. Very controlled. I've got videos on big red reversing up big red at idle speed in reverse in this vehicle. Okay, so you can search around YouTube and try and find that. Not on my channel. Some other people recorded it. A few people put it up. You might find it there somewhere. Sorry about that. Someone has to do the entertainment. Really good, reliable vehicle. The cooling system's improved compared to the 90 series, bigger cooling system, so hopefully less cracked heads because that was an issue, sometimes cracked heads. Maybe the quality of the head wasn't bang on, could be made in the C word, you know what I mean? Um, and the quality could have been just down a bit and they probably resolved that later with the other engines and that what we're talking about here. So 1KZ, really good, reliable. You just gotta make sure the cooling system's Mickey Mouse and you change your glow plugs every 100,000 Ks and follow the rest of the videos, nothing to worry about. But it's probably not best for towing. If you've got a camper trailer, sorry, I'm gonna talk more than a minute on each vehicle. I've got too much info for you. If you're gonna be towing a camper trailer a short distance, you know, within, say you live in Victoria, within Victoria, or, you know, within a few hundred Ks, you're gonna be a bit slow. You're gonna be slow up the hills and so what? Because when you get to camp, you're gonna unhook it. You're not like these cowboys on these other channels that, you know, tow and trailers places they shouldn't, but you're gonna set it up there and then you're gonna go and do your full driving. The 1KZ manual, I would recommend the manual because the autos, the, the four speed's not as good. It's all right. You can, you know, I'm not here to bag out the autos, but it's just not the best option. The, the five speed's a good option. They're a really good five speed. They've got the cast iron on the front where the clutch, the thrust bearing runs, so you don't have that problem because I'll recommend against manuals once you get to the six speed right so the six speed don't I recommend get the auto okay so we'll get to that in a minute though right so the 1kz so what I'm trying to paint a picture is it's a really reliable four drive but it is slower now when you upgrade to a 1kd like I did in a silver 120 but to a five speed auto you'll notice a massive 
increase in power and torque. It's not that massive. It's not even 130 kilowatts and about four, just over 400 newton meters of torque, but it's a genuine number and it gets it down low and it holds it through the range. Works really well off-road. Um, I will say all the diesels are pretty well gutless once you get over 100 k's. Ballpark figure number, like, you know, don't get me wrong, they all keep going after that, of course. You know, Mox, one, Mox 7, we call it. I think 170 is Mox 7. But anyway, that's another story. Um, they get going, but they go slowly. So when you want to overtake, you haven't got the grunt there. But the 1KZ, it's really good, but it is getting old. So if you're thinking you need a bit more power and maybe I'm not recommending the 1KD for hooking up a big maximum load caravan going around Australia because that's going to greatly add to your risk of failure. Absolutely, the four cylinder, in my opinion, is never suited to hooking up a two and a half ton caravan towing around Australia multiple times, okay? Not suited to it. You can do it, you'll probably be okay. If you've got all your other maintenance right from the start, you'll probably be okay. And there's plan B, C's and D's, you know, crack piston puns, maintenance, you know, all the usual stuff we talk about. Let's not go there in this video. So the 1KD though is a massive upgrade. More power, more torque. It actually drives really well. Um, you're looking at one here in front of us. It doesn't work that well in a Hilux with a four-speed auto, okay? So I'd recommend the manual, again, the five-speed manual, or get the five-speed auto if you can once it gets to that year in 2013, that month, you know, where they change to the five-speed. This is a four-speed auto with the detuned Hilux engine, which we're working on a solution. We're still working on that. So stay tuned, subscribe, turn the bell on if you don't want to miss that because we're going to turn your Hiluxes into Prados safely is the plan, but we're working on it. May, may not happen. We've got the equipment, we're working on it. Okay, slow process, because we want to get it right. So, basically, you know, let's jump straight across to the V6 now and give that some time. Okay, so the V6, another awesome engine. They're all awesome engines, so no misunderstanding here. you got all these people that go, I'm glad I got this, I'm glad I got that. And you know what? Sometimes they're glad because it's a misunderstanding. Sometimes they know what they're talking about. Sometimes they made the right decision, sometimes they didn't. Same with the diesel. There's probably more diesel owners that should have the V6 than V6 owners that should have the diesel. There you go, right? So all these people buying diesel cars that aren't four-wheel drives, that was a complete waste of time. All these little cars that get seven litres per hundred Ks on petrol, but you can get the diesel version and get six litres per hundred Ks. Mistake, okay? Diesels are for four-wheel drive. They're for long trips, outback touring, where you need the economy because that's what fits in the tank or you've got to carry this extra fuel and you want to be carrying diesel, not petrol. And people can go, oh, it's fine to carry petrol in the car, on the roof, whatever you reckon you're going to do. Good luck to you. I wouldn't do it, okay? So you can do that if you want. So that's what diesels are for. They're for full driving. The engine compression works better downhills, more smooth power uphills on the rough stuff. I watch people, I've been watching them for decades on tracks with the difference between petrols, diesels, different tyres, autos, manuals, everything. I take it all in, okay? Um, you're definitely disadvantaged. I'm not saying you can't do the track and whatever, but you're definitely disadvantaged. You might have a higher chance you're going to break something. Um, it's a rougher ride, and it may, it's certainly more difficult. You might have to just give it the berries and hope for the best, which isn't always the way. If you watch our videos on 4 Before Adventures, our other YouTube channel, you see we do it slow and smooth, and that's how we roll because we don't want to break stuff. And that's how the diesel work. It's got the low down, you know, it's got that power and the torque there. It's got the turbo and it's just, it's a hat. It's just awesome. It can't even really explain it. The V6 is hostile. Now, if you're not doing a lot of kilometers, okay, you're doing five, 10,000 Ks a year, maybe 15, maybe the V6 is better for you. Now, I'm going to give you a quick example. Someone that owned or did own for many years at the same time, two 120s, one V6, one diesel, Blah, blah, blah. One got 10 litres per 100 Ks. One got 14 litres per 100 Ks. Fair comparison. Now, everyone's going to get, oh, I get better, I get worse. Everyone's going to put up their best fuel figures or their worst whatever. The diesel owners aren't going to comment. They're just going to smile and go, whatever. Why is Anthony even doing this video? Because the V6 owners like to go, yes, you, yes, you, mate. Yes, show us that bicep picture. The big mighty V6. And Scott's sitting back having a laugh as well, going, ha, ha, there's Stu again in the V6. He's got a V6 too. It's awesome, right? Anyway, like I said, awesome engines. But if you with these petrol engines, the Toyotas miss oil changes, that's trouble. But that's another story. I'm trying to paint a picture of which engine should suit you. Then in 2015, they came out with this 1GD, and I went, oh, 2755cc, really? From that big Land Cruiser. And people, this whole thing at the moment about Land Cruiser, don't call it a Land Cruiser, it's a Prado. But you know how dumb that is. I'm sorry, people, but it is an LC120 and LC150 Land Cruiser. It even says on some of the headlights, Land Cruiser. It's, a, it's what it is. It's just in Australia or some of the countries, they call it a Prado. It's a marketing name. Do you get that? So just stop with the, 
Oh, he told me he's got a Land Cruiser, and then he turned up in a Prado <laughs> picture. Like, I mean, hello, it's not even that funny. It's kind of like, what's the word for it when it's the other way around? Bit of egg on face there anyway, but egg on face, chicken in place or something like that. What do the kids used to say? Some stupid thing like that anyway. I, don't, I never got it. Egg in place, chicken on face. Chicken in place, egg on face. I don't know. It's just ridiculous. It rhymes anyway, and they'd smile and laugh. So happy days, right? So this video is getting a bit longer than what we thought. The 1GD, right? So I went, oh, new engines, DPFs, every other make and model's been having DPF problems for 10 years. This is back in 2015. So I don't want to touch that. And what do people do like they normally do? Ordered the Toyota. Yes, got the Toyota, got the 1GD. Don't worry, Anthony said, stick with the last of the best and look what Anthony's doing. And Anthony got a couple of 1GDs. And Anthony said, do as I say, not as I do. And what's Anthony doing now is going to be the last 1GD ever owns. Gonna, it's been set up now. I'll put the time into it. We've only had it two years. It's done 60,000 Ks. We'll keep it another roughly two years, more or less. And over that period towards the end, I'll transfer everything over to our recently acquired 2013 1KD GX. Awesome vehicle with only 320,000 Ks. So it's run in now and we'll, uh, we'll, that'll be the keeper. So we'll have three 1KDs in the end and the 1GD will be gone. Anybody interested in a nice, well set up 1GD over the next year or two, stay in contact, let me know, start saving your money. Because remember I said, don't get a personal loan. That would be bad debt, wasting monthly fees, interest and application fees and all this sort of thing. You just work, work, work on the hamster wheel to pay off that loan. Save your money, save your money. But I wouldn't recommend buying that anyway, would I? So here I am. I'm sort of meant to be telling you how good they are till I sell it. And then, oh, no, have, oh, here, what are we going to do here? Oh, no. Yeah, but I'm telling you, I wouldn't buy one. But if you want one, I can help, okay? I can give you the best one, the best looked after, the best setup. But the setup will be coming out of it if you take too long. So make contact early, even if it's a transaction we're going to do later. You know, you can pay a deposit. How do I just go completely off topic on these videos, isn't it? Anyway, the 1GD. So what did Anthony have to do? 2019, they've been around four years. A lot of talk, a lot of problems, a lot of DPF problems, timing chain, this, that, and the other. Anthony, I wouldn't touch one while they had a three-year warranty. They came out with a five-year warranty. They changed the front, the headlights made it look a bit better. I went, no, we're getting a bit better now, okay. Well, you know, I need a tax deduction. I've got all these old cars that, you know, they're all right, you know. I need to sort of get these newer cars to learn and, you know, work on them and set them up. That way you start pulling them apart and have a look what's where and what's what. Helps you learn and stay, in, you know, up to date with things. So I go and get a 2019, September 2019, brand new GX, graphite colour, looks great, awesome car, very gutless. People used to tell me, oh, you know, it feels like the handbrake's on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's how gutless it was. So we've got a GX. You know how light a GX is with nothing in it? We're talking the car, I reckon, drives probably 2,200 kilos. With me and some fuel, it was probably 2,400-ish, somewhere there. We've got a 2008 old 1KD Clapper 2008 five-speed auto with bubble bars and heavy-duty side steps, underbody protection, roof racks, storage systems, fridges, everything in it that weighs 2,800 kilos every day of the week. And it's just quicker off the mark and it blows it up. It even blew away the Hilux that we compared to. I've talked about that in other videos, which is again, about 2,400 kilos. Every set of lights over a 20K distance. Boom, 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 all the way to 60, 70. Anyway, getting on the on-ramps of the freeway, I felt that the 120 was always quicker. The 1GD just felt like a letdown. This is seat of the pants. I don't need a dyno. I know how the cars drive. It's just my opinion. Of course, everyone's got a different opinion because they've got a different engine maintenance program. Maybe they've got... Whatever they've got, I don't know how you could really be that much different because it's just what it is. So look, at the end of the day, I think the 1GDs are very gutless. I think it's undersized. I wouldn't have one in a Prado. It's probably better in the Hilux because it's lighter. It's probably certainly more suited to something like a Fortuna or more to the point, even a RAV4 if they put it in there because it's more relative the size of the engine to the size of the vehicle, which as I've said in other videos, this is what I was educated about I think in even year nine, year 10 at tech school, you know, the automotive teacher explaining small cars, four cylinders, medium cars, six cylinders, V8s, you know, when people, you know, towing the caravan. I remember how small caravans were then. Now we're towing caravans with four cylinder diesels and massive four wheel drives. Like, just have a think about it, how it makes any sense. Anyway, if you're with me, subscribe, turn the bell on, we'll catch you on the next video. But I haven't really finished yet. So then, so then they did the remap. It's what I call the remap. A lot of people think it's a new engine. It's not a new engine. They've just done a few little refinements, put a bigger turbo, change it. It's a remap, right? One word, remap is what it is. So it went from 130 to 150 kilowatts on paper. 
it doesn't really feel that much different. I've done a video comparing, directly comparing, you know, the old one and the new one. My explanation, there was four different aspects to it. You can go find that video. It's probably in a playlist, maybe. It could be in a 1GD playlist. Have we got one of those? Could be in our 1GD Facebook group, hashtag 1GD Forever crew. Good luck with that group, man. It's the smallest group, funnily enough. Um, well, not be really forever. We'll just see what happens. With camshafts wearing through, the hard, losing the hardening at 250,000 Ks, evidence in that group, right? Go and check it out. Anyway, not to mention the DPFs and the timing chains, but you've got a lifetime warranty. See so how that works for you when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're on the side of the road and all these workshops are booked out. We can't get you in for six weeks in Alice Springs or whatever, right? So just giving you some examples. You need reliable cars. You need RACV, top, top level cover. Starting to sound like trouble, these diesels, aren't they? Well, you've got to be careful. You certainly do. That's why you need to pick the right vehicle, which is why I'm going to talk till I'm blue in the face and give you some information, hoping that you can understand the engines a bit better and make a better decision. Maybe you've got to be looking at buying a car. Maybe you're going to, uh, you know, change cars like other people are talking about. And I don't recommend people need to change cars, but I'm going to finally, at the conclusion of this video, I'll give you my recommendation. You know what, I'm going to put this video out on uh, New Year's Eve. There you go, New Year's Eve for this video. So, New Year's Eve special, we'll call it. Which bloody engine's the best? And, you know, it'll be interesting to see how many people actually sit and watch the whole thing and put in the comments at the end. Um, yeah, be interesting. Let us know if you watch the whole thing, okay? And we'll only get that in the comments if they get this far. How far? What are we, 20 minutes already? I feel like I've been talking for ages. Now, 1GD, so, you know, it was a big letdown, that 2019. Four years they've been around, five-year warranty. I thought, you know what, by now they would have solved all the problems. You would have thought four years down the track. Four years is a good number on a new car that it's been out and, you know, minimal changes, just upgrades, whatever. So that's what we went for. It was disappointing. Now, don't get me wrong, any cars, it's still better, it's still the best option out there. It's still a Toyota, right? Other makes and models, we'll talk about that in another video. I'm going to talk about the, the H word and the K word and the um, M word. The one that ends in I with the 10-year warranty and the ones with the 7-year warranty. Yeah, we're going to do all that in another video. I've got to be careful because I was about to say these M words, these are really good value for money, long warranty, blah, blah, blah. But then I've only talked to a few people that have got them and the stories that I've heard, how the car was with the dealer more than them and that. And then the one recently about, you know, uh, getting a full refund, it's headaches. So we're not going to go there in the video. We've got to do some more homework first, which is why the video hasn't been done yet. Because if we talk about something, we want to get it right. And even though I'm yakking now, I just don't really care. Can you tell I just don't care? I'm just here to yak. And the right people are listening, the wise people, the people that want to sort of know what I know. I've worked on a lot of these. I've owned a lot of these. I've used and driven them all over Australia. And in the workshop, working on driving, all the different comparisons. So, look, I'm not here to say that, you know, I'm the best or anything. I'm just trying to say that I've probably got the best understanding and the best you know, information for you on, um, you know, this sort of thing, if you know what I mean. If you know, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? So look, 1GD was pretty disappointing. I was happy to get rid of that. But then they, uh, it was a three to four year plan, get rid of it while it's still under warranty. If someone buys it, goes, yeah, I'm happy. I've got time to make sure everything's right. It's under warranty. It makes people feel better, you know? So I'm happy to be part of that. And then I got this one and I thought, yeah, I'll do the same. I'll upgrade because it was the C word, you know, where you get heaps of money for, so I got the money back and all that and ordered the new one and all that. And the new ones have gone up a lot and paid a bit more and they've gone up even more now, so whatever. And it's a massive improvement because one of the biggest problems was the transmission software in that six speed. It was just absolute rubbish. And it's, you've seen videos on it before, so I'm not gonna waste time on it just other than to say, it was almost impossible to keep the talk about a lot and 117, was the transmission temp just about all the time, which is a bit hotter than I would like, really. All my 1KDs generally stay 70, 80, 90, no more than 100. I'm quite happy with that, with no coolers or anything like that. There's a lot of things you don't need on vehicles. Keep watching the videos. I'll do a fresh one soon with all the things you don't need, waste of money, under your bonnet for any four-wheel drive, which will be different to what other people tell you. But, you know, I'll tell you why. Different perspectives, I guess. It's more understanding why. When you understand why, even the people that tell you you need these things, in the end, after a discussion with me, yes, they would have to agree because it's just the fact of the matter, you know? It's just the fact sometimes. It's not the opinion. Do you need a catch can? I mean, you know, it's the fact. It's not the, you know, it's not the opinion. Do you need diff breathers? Oh, you know, well, you know, is a car a submarine? Have we ever seen water in diffs? Blah, blah, blah. Does it kill the diff? It's not an automatic transition. It's just the diff, right? Anyway, what's the diff? Anyway, 
it's completely off topic, but good information getting you to think outside the square. So don't worry about the topic, right? The topic doesn't matter. I'm taking my time on these 1GD little gutless pieces, you know, 2755cc, way too small for a Land Cruiser. That's what it is. Yes, an LC150, Land Cruiser 150. Have a look at the plate, Prado, whatever. Okay, so the engine's too small, right? Three tonne towing, three and a half tonne. What have they got on them? Anyway, and I certainly wouldn't touch one of those engines combined with a H word, you know? Toyota petrol hybrid's awesome, but with a diesel, you are just absolutely dreaming. And people have got these things on order. They don't even know what they're getting. People are saying, I've got this, I'm getting the I'm getting the new Angry, I'm getting the Oh yeah, what is it? Tell me about it. Oh, we don't know yet, we have to wait and see. Awesome, right? Now Toyota have got some awesome vehicles, you know. They've got tundras, you know, and they're V six petrol, twin turbo, hybrids. In other countries, not in Australia, because just because they have something doesn't mean we get it in Australia. It's up to those greedy TMCA people to decide what we're going to get and what we're not, right? And they care about money, their pay packet, and keeping people happy. So their pay packet's happy, their pocket, more than what you need and what the country needs and what the environment needs in Australia, okay? Otherwise, it'd be petrol hybrids all the way, to be quite honest, because electric is actually a really good option off-road as well. Um, these things have been around for decades. That's another video. Bzz, bzz, rewind. Okay, 1GD. So, you know, we swapped over to the January 22, 1GD. Remap version, more 150 kilowatts, more torque. This is what I've got to tell you about it. The one, the first 1GD, the 19, that was a little bit sluggish off the mark compared to my 1KDs, but it's pretty good compared to the remap. The remap... They put a bigger turbo or something like that. You can put it in the comments. Let me know what they've done. Because I don't really care too much about what they've done. I just go, yeah, whatever. Every time I go to take off, it's sluggish. When I say sluggish, it's like a flat spot that lasts seconds. Not a split second. Seconds. It's like you're at a roundabout. You're, like, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. You almost need a two-foot drive it and stall it up to 1,500 and drop the brake. And it still doesn't go, right? It's... I did another video, I did a zero to 100 when we we're out in the outback, right? We did a video, we took off flat out and I went to the floor. It's like, you can see the video and then once they get going, they get going, but it doesn't do anything until about over 1500. It's just so laggy for anything to actually happen, which is a real problem for city driving. Now, that being said, the good part about it, city driving, because it's a newer, more efficient engine than the 1KD. Yeah, that's what I said. A newer, more efficient engine than the 1KD, yes. It'll be better for economy, smoother and quieter. It'll be better for economy in the 60, 70, 80K zones, maybe 90. But once you get into the 100 zone, as you know, the 2013 1KD we've acquired, on our trips used to always get 10 litres per 100 Ks, while our 1GD gets 12 litres per 100 Ks. Same fuel, same driving, same speed, driving in a bunch of cars together on trips. And that's what used to happen, based on averages, about 2 litres per 100 Ks less than the 1GD. So less than the 2022 1GD, that's right, a 2013 1KD Prado, 20, 15, 20% better fuel economy, right? Awesome 1KD work, that's why that's gonna be our touring vehicle. We'll probably have some other vehicles as well, keep your, stay, stay tuned, keep your eyes out for the petrol hybrids when they come to Australia, if that ever happens, or we might even import a Tundra if they don't do that, who knows, right? Who knows what we're gonna do next? But we've got the Farm Ute here, which does some of the harder tracks, we got the old, trust the old 120, it's not going anywhere. The old favourite's been pretty much everywhere in Australia and it's got more places to go yet. And of course we'll have the 150 1KD, right, as another touring vehicle. So three 1KDs, a couple other cars here and there maybe, what matters, right? Very sluggish off the mark, okay. What it's really good for is for people, if you're driving a lot on the highway, highway speed, and maintaining speed. So if you're towing or not towing, I've towed a little bit with it. But when you come to hills, the torque converter stays locked, which is good. But it still runs a lot hotter. So you've got to watch those videos in the playlist and all these other videos. And you know what I'm talking about. It runs heaps hotter. I'm not saying it's a problem. Running at 90 or 100, it's not really a problem. I'm just saying, note, note, these vehicles run at 69, my lucky number, right? You can see it in all the videos. You watch it and how many times photos on our Facebook groups or videos where it's on 69, right? Like, they just love it. The 1KDs, they love it at 69. Now, the 1GD never does anything like It just passes straight past 69. You're driving along, torque converter lock, and it just keeps going up, up, up till it hits coolant temp. It runs pretty much at coolant temp. Um, if, you, if you've got, I've told my reasons why. If you've got a reason why or you don't believe me, you've got another reason, put it in the comments, let me know. Open to feedback, something to think about. 
Well, it's like those people tell me those uh, the rear door strikers adjustable. Like, hello? I mean, <laughs> we'll do another video on that. It's a whole separate video. I'm sure you subscribe with a bell on by now if you waited this late in the video. How long can this guy talk for without even taking a breath and getting a drink of water? It's unbelievable, isn't it? Okay, so you get my picture on the 1GD. It's still too small. They've remapped the hell out of it. How long is it going to last? Who knows? It's very laggy, which I find very annoying. What's great on the highway, you come to the hills, boom, back to fifth, and it locks, boom. Sometimes it does the crazy back to fourth, rah, revs and all that. Should be. Look, when I've manually controlled it, not using cruise control, it holds the speed up some pretty decent darn hills in fifth and sixth gear. I can keep it sixth gear convert lock if I control it, even fifth quite easily. It's absolutely awesome. I'm absolutely in love with the software they've done with the remap, okay? So I'll, Credit where credit's due, it's absolutely awesome, okay? The transmission's another Azen transmission, like the five-speed. Would it be bulletproof? They're both bulletproof as far as quality materials. Just do those oil flushes every now and then. It's all you need to do. Don't take the pan off. Don't risk contamination. Don't let the wrong people work on it. Okay, you get the picture. So if you want to do some big towing and you can't afford 100, 150 grand for these V6s and V8s and all that sort of thing, that's fine. And but you can afford a brand new 1GD Prado, then go ahead and do that. As long as you're not gonna modify it heavily, add weight, add more restriction to its performance, and you're not gonna keep it longer than five years. So do it if you have to, okay? Like if you, you know, you get, you get a company car new one every three years or two, three, four years, because if you're doing 20, 30, 40, 50 grand worth of mods like people do, you can't change your car every two, three, four years without it costing you. Look, if, you, if you're if you on a million dollars a year, do whatever you want. You're not listening to me now, are you? Because you're obviously smarter than me because you make almost as much money as me. Ah, just joking, maybe. Anyway, whatever. That doesn't matter, right? Because all you need is a 1KD. It doesn't matter how much money you make. But if you're making all the money, you've just gone and got a 300. So we're not talking to you either, right? So we're not talking to these people. Yeah, there's been a lot of chit chat. Have we got anywhere in this video? Let me know in the comments. I'm painting a big picture here, right? So the 1KZ, if you're happy to go slow, it's really reliable. Keep your cooling system good. The 1KD, it's absolutely bulletproof, other than on the very slightest slim chance, the weak point is, yes, it can crack a piston. That's correct. But the engines are very cheap. They're very good value for money. You get an engine from me, brand new, with injectors, pipes, water pumps, everything you need, under $10,000, right? Put it in yourself. You might figure it out or you can i can find someone that you can pay to put it in for a few grand something like that look just have a budget of 15 grand you got some optional extras if you've got plenty of money have a budget of 20 grand because you're going to throw a radiator and a turbo and all these things at it that it doesn't need but because you can right so 20 grand tell me what's cheaper right for people that stayed at the end of the video a twenty thousand dollar hilux with a twenty thousand dollar engine turbo radiator and all that that's 40 grand or a new Hilux for 70 or 80 grand, or a Prada for 80 or 90, whatever it is these days, right? What's cheaper? And you know what works better? We've just been through what works better. Okay, so you want your five-speed auto with a 1KD is the pick of the bunch if you're gonna be traveling out back Australia or on four-wheel drive tracks a fair bit. If you are gonna be mainly going to school and back shops and back to the family's houses and friends and all that and back, and you're just gonna go off-road two days once a year and you only do 10,000 Ks a year, the V6 is for you if you can find one, but beware buying them. If they've missed services, they could have blocked oil pickups. Also beware with any of the diesels, particularly as they get older, anything over 200,000 Ks would be high risk if you haven't checked the oil pickup in case the injector seats are leaking, but they're more likely to start leaking even higher kilometers. Anything from two, 230, 250, 300, but I've seen them at 400,000 Ks not leaking. So you, there's no absolute. Highway Ks is your friend on any vehicle. Um, a car that's done heaps of highway Ks, a 300,000K car that's done highway Ks, 300,000, is much better than a 150,000 kilometre stop-start car that's twice as old that you think you got a good deal on because it's done low Ks, right? Because you're going to spend the money anyway. Because of the age, you're going to do your injectors, you're going to do your maintenance. On the V6, you're still going to have to change your fuel tank senders because of the age because the petrol stuffed them. Your fuel tank hose is going to be cracked. Your crank seal is going to be leaking. Your rear main is going to be leaking. Your rocker cover is going to... Everything's going to be leaking on the V6. The problem is the fuel in the oil. The fuel gets in the oil, the contamination to the oil, and the oil acts on the seals. The diesel doesn't have that problem. It hasn't got petrol in the oil. That's why this thing's bone dry, and it will be at a million kilometres and two million kilometres. They do not... The 1KDs do not leak oil, okay? Capish. 
Watch the oil leak videos, that little O-ring, seven bucks or whatever it is, right? That's the only oil leak. Everything else, it's like one in a million. They're just bone dry. It's a diesel. It's, an, it's just so awesome. That's, I love them so much. That's why I'm going to have three. Well, I've got three of them, right? I'm not going to have. They're going to be the three main vehicles. But then the problem, the kids keep earmarking the vehicles. Oh, Dad, I want to have... I want the 120, but I want the 120. Oh, well, I'll have the Hilux. Hang on a minute. Who said anyone's having my cars, mate? So I'm going to need some more 1KDs, apparently. <coughs> Look, the V6 is awesome, but get the picture, right? If you're going to be doing heaps of Ks, you're going to be chewing the fuel. You work it out. Remember what we said? Ten. Okay, here's another thing to think about. This is why it's worth saying to the end. Gold nuggets all the way, right? Write gold nuggets in the comment if you made it this far. Just gold nuggets. Right, um... The petrol, everyone knows a petrol engine, right? Let's say it gets 10 litres per hundred k. Duh, let's just pretend it does. If you hook up two tonnes, you know it gets 20 litres per hundred k, right? It doubles. So a petrol engine, when you tow with it, mate, I've been around decades. I've had boats, camper trailers, whatever stuff. I've towed some big things around. I know what happens with fuel economy. You know, even small boats, I've got to tell you. Yeah, I've got 14 foot tinny back when I was about 20 years old, right? 14 foot gannet with a strong back, 40 Yamaha, beautiful. Down to Stony Point and back, you know, all the time. Anyway, it used to use twice as much fuel tow on that, right? We're talking, you know, good speed limit there, $1.10, whatever, plus. Right, but because of the bow on it, you know, it used to sit up a bit higher than the roof of the uh, XE Falcon, was my first car, yeah, and then the EDX R6. But because it just caught so much more wind, the petrol engine was working harder, and they they no, no they absolutely used doubles. I used to tow with the EDX R6, towed the Haines Signature to Bermagui, where I'd normally get at least 600 k's on a tank of fuel, I'd get 300 k's I'd have to fill up, right? So it doesn't matter really so much about the big and the weight, it's the wind resistance creating the work for the engine, and it pretty much doubles the fuel, it didn't matter if it was the 14 foot tinny or the Haines Signature, that was the result, right? With a diesel, you're gonna use about 20, 30, maybe 40%, depends what you're towing and how hard you're driving, of course, okay? But you're gonna use a little bit more fuel in comparison. So if you're doing a lot of towing, if you are traveling around Australia, then a diesel option is good to save on fuel. Um, but there's all these factors to take into account. Like the V8, you've got to pay for twice as many injectors and twice as many fuel pipes, all this sort of thing. So, you know, I mean, where does it end? There's so many things to think about. The V6 is good for low Ks. If you want to be fast, if when you go on trips, you need to overtake all these slow diesels with caravans, which is true, the V6 absolutely belts past everything, mate. 100 to 160 in six seconds. You know what I mean? It's like, shoom, when you past everything, right? They're absolute rocket ships. I love petrol engines. I love the V6. Hey, whack twin turbos on it. Make it a hybrid even better, right? Get my picture, right? Write that in the comments. Four litre V6 twin turbo hybrid. How good would that be? Now, you just don't need a big grunty engine when you've got a hybrid. The whole point is the, petr the electric engine's got the torque. So you put a big electric engine, you have a four-cylinder, really efficient, like what they run now in the Corollas and Camrys and RAV4s and all that. You just have an engine like that. That's the only engine you need. When the Prado Hilux comes out with a proper hybrid, you don't need any bigger engine. You just have a bigger electric engine. You have more batteries. Bigger car can have a bigger engine, bigger batteries, and you still have that same engine there to start up and run as a generator. The car's officially running as electric. And then that's your generator to recharge your batteries. When you absolutely floor it, then, of course, it stops charging. They couple up together, and away you go, petrol electric together, like a rocket ship, and shoot past everything. It's the absolute best system, and only people that listen to me at the end of this video say that will know, will think about that, will understand it. You've got to understand how these things work. That is the only vehicle choice in Australia anyone should be buying now is a Toyota petrol hybrid. So don't buy any other new cars until that comes out. I'm not, unless it's a very long time and I get sick of waiting and I've got too much money, I need a tax deduction, then I'll probably do something anyway. But like I said, do as I say, not as I do. If you've got plenty of money, you're not listening to me already because you're smarter than that. But if you need help, you want to learn, you want to understand what I understand, then you just keep listening to videos like we are now. I'm still going, aren't I? All right, so V8s, it's going to cost you a lot more to buy one. V6s, you know, that's the 300. It's going to cost you a lot more to buy one. It could certainly be more suitable, but it could certainly have a lot more expensive maintenance down the track, twice as many injectors, fuel pipes, all that sort of thing. It's not as imperative. So the good news with these are they're different setups compared to the 1KDs, the one where when the seats leak, that's where the carbon can block the oil pickup. That's not going to happen on a 1GD or some of these newer vehicles, right? A lot of different designs. You've got to really look at each particular engine and understand that. 
Okay, so that's not a concern. Of course, injectors got better and better from the last 20 years. All new diesel injectors now are gonna last a lot longer. Why? It's important to get new injectors. So injector kits Monday morning, 7.30 a.m. for your 1KDs, everything else, good luck with that. We choose the best engine we say, see available in the best vehicles. That's what we've chosen, that's why. That's what suits our needs. Um, I'd be pretty happy. I mean, on one hand, far, if you had a farm ute, the V6 not doing a lot of Ks would probably be good on the farm. Just do the oil every 5,000 Ks or six months, whichever comes first. Um, and um, that'd be fine as well. Um, but look, for the tracks, like I said, diesel, just delivering that smooth power to get over that rough stuff nice and slow with a bit of torque, but nice and smooth is definitely better. Deceleration downhills and that. If you ever get out in the real wet stuff, Diesel manual actually rules above all else, even though you've got all these traction aids now, I still believe a good diesel manual, even like an old 1KZ. So 1KZ is good for, say you've got your um, electric car because you're going to save the planet and you do, your, that's your cheap run around, right? You've got the cheapest, best electric car you could get. Say you've got a Polestar or something like that, I don't even know how much they are, but let's say you got one of them, say they were cheap. By the way, let's just mention, I heard lithium's like a quarter of the price of what it was last year and electric cars are going down to about a third of the price of what they were. I know, a third off or whatever, right? Now, is that about right? Put it in the comments, let me know. I'm not saying you should go buy an electric car at all. In my opinion, it's not suitable. The infrastructure's not there. There's too many problems, diesel generators next to the charging stations and all that. It's just a joke. But anyway, save the planet if you will. But whatever little cheap car you've got, you might have a 1990 KH laser just sitting there that's your run around to go to work. And you might have a 1KZ Prado that you just... That's your 1KZ diesel manual, awesome four-wheel drive for the weekends, for the trips and that sort of thing. And you have your other fast car. You might have a BMW or a Mercedes or something for your everyday run around. Anyway, I've yacked enough. Hopefully it's helped to paint a picture of the feedback on all these engines the way I see it. The V6, I'd get the five-speed auto only. I wouldn't get the manual. The 1KDs, I'd get the five-speed auto only. Highly recommend the five-speed auto, the six-speed auto. Um, so acceptable vehicles, 1KZ manual for a bit of four-wheel driving, for not much use, low kilometres, but you want the diesel because you do four-wheel driving, right? Um, V6, 120, ideally, because it's easy to get to the oil filter, but the 150 is all right. So I just prefer the smaller car. The 120 V6 is good. Um, for if you're doing the lower Ks, you like some grunt, you like to boot it and get around quick, it's certainly an awesome engine, and overtaking, getting to and from trips really quickly, okay, for people that are not as relaxed. Um, the 1KD, of course, in the 120 or the 150, awesome with a five-speed auto is my recommendations. For suit most people's needs, really, um, but not everybody. And that's probably why that's the majority of the vehicles that we see and that's the way things are. And then the 1GD, which I've always said since before 2015, this new engine, you don't know it, don't trust it, wait and see what happens, but people didn't. And I've never changed my position from there. And then in 2019, I said, do as I say, not as I do, let me see. I went and saw, I don't really like good quality new car, it's the only way to get a new car. But of course, disappointing on the engine under the bonnet and the transmission software. So 15 to 20 before the remap, wouldn't touch one. So if you've got one, sorry people, but you know, that's just how it is, my opinion, whatever. If you like it, then that's fine. Stick with it, whatever you want to do. But if it was me, I'd sell it and get to something else. You can probably go back to a 14 or 15, 1KD and put some money in your pocket, but you better drive one first and see if you agree with me. How respond, I get in our 13, 1KD, just touch accelerator, wrong, it's just off, mate. At that roundabout, the same roundabouts, the same start. I'm comparing, I drive both the vehicles every week, uh, you know, thousands of kilometers, I'm like, man, well, you know, I know what I'm comparing here. It's just chalk and cheese. It's so much more uh, responsive. And of course, holds the speed really well and torque converter lock on the highway speed as well in fifth gear and fourth and all that. So there's no, it's not as good on the auto, but it's good enough, if you know what I mean. So they're awesome. Um, what else is there? And then, so the one GD, the later one, if you've got plenty of money, you can get the later one if you're not gonna keep it too long. You can do whatever you want, I'm just saying, my recommendations, okay? Long yak yak videos, and there's a Christmas Eve special for you. All right, so any of those comments, I'll be looking to see. I'll be checking those uh, a few hours after I put it out on Christmas Eve, if I remember, if I'm not too drunk or something like that to remember to put a video out and what time I'll come back to it later, if I can still read. Probably um, see you, meet you at the, uh, somewhere down at Docklands Casino, somewhere around there, that area. Get something to eat, whatever. So let me know if you're around, because uh, that's probably where we might be on uh, New Year's Eve, whatever, so. If you know me, shoot me a text message, mate. Check out my Facebook, get on Anthony Prado Forby. If you watch this end of video and hit the friend button because you are real. All right, people, have a great new year. Catch you on the next video. See ya.